This movie is presented by System Vlog Academy and please do subscribe to our channel to watch more System Vlog design, verification and UVM videos. Array, Structure and Union Before learning classes in detail, you should refresh it. what is the concept of using Array, Structure and Union in a, in a programming language. So as you might be knowing, an array is a way to collect and access a large number of variables under a single name and the speciality is that all those variables should be of same data type. Here is an example, an integer array, int mark of 20. So just by using this, this array with a name mark, you can store 20 mar different marks in this single variable. If you are not using an array, you will have to declare 20 individual indi integer variables, something like mark1, mark2, etc. But just by using an array, you are able to store a large number of variables or access a large number of variables under a single name. And structure. Structure is again a way to collect and access a large number of variables. But this time, the variables could be of different data types. So it's an easy way to collect and access different variables of different data types under a single name. Remember that the members of a structure is called data members. Here is an example of defining a structure in system builder. So as you can see here, this structure named student underscore data hold two type two, two data members which are of different data types. So once you define a structure, you will be able to declare variables of this newly added type. So by defining a structure, you are defining a new data type to your, your own programming uh, environment. I am declaring a variable with name S1 which is of type student underscore data. So it, it is, you can think of similar to declaring an integer variable like int A or int S1. So just by defining a structure like this, you will be able to define a variable of that particular type, structure data type. Once you define a variable of data type structure, you will be able to access the individual data members of such a structure like s1.name, s1.score etc. So you will be able to assign a, a string value to the s1.name and you will be able to assign a score value, an integer value to the score variable. And also you will be able to define an array of structure uh, type uh, data types like student data s2 of 100. So here it is uh, declaring a structure type array. Thus you will be able to save data of 100 students with this name um, s2. One final word here, just by declaring a structure like this in system log, you will be getting a compilation error. If you wanted to define a structure like this, you need to add the typed of keyword before this uh, structure, struct keyword. There is a reason behind it, you can ignore it this at point of time. Because a system log, if you wanted to make this newly added structure as a new data type, you need to add typed of keyword. Arrays can be used as data members of a structure. So here, to the same structure, I have added a newly a new data member like mark of 20. And you can access the individual data, data member and that array data member as well like s1 dot mark of 0, s1 dot uh, mark of 1 and etc. So here is another example which is more relevant for system like verification. Here I am defining a structure named best fund packet and it, it could be something like a data packet which is transmitted along with an address 16 bytes of data and a control field. The structure members are ADDR, data and CNDL. We can see that data is again an array of, of bytes or array of logic 7 down to 0. Address is just a logic 7 down to 0 type variable and control is just a logic 3 down to 0 type variable. After defining this structure type variable, remember along with the type def keyword, you will be able to define individual structure type variables like bus fund packet of p1. So p1 is, to, is of type variable bus fund packet. And as you have seen earlier, you will be able to access the individual data members like p1.adr and p1.control and so on. And in a for loop, you will be able to access the individual data members of this array, data array, like 
പി വൺ ഓഫ് ഡേറ്റ ഓഫ് സീറോ ഇസ് ഇക്വൽ സം വാല്യൂ ഓർ യു കെൻ ഈവൻ പുട്ട് പി വൺ ഓഫ് ഡേറ്റ പി വൺ ഓഫ് ഡേറ്റ ഓഫ് ഫൈവ് ഇൻ സം വാല്യൂ ഇൻ എ ഫോർ ലൂപ്പ് ആൻഡ് യു വിൽ ബി ഏബിൾ ടു ആക്സസ് ഓൾ ദി ഡേറ്റ എലമെൻസ് ഇൻ ദിസ് പാക്കറ്റ് ഫൈനലി യു ലേൺ അബൌട്ട് യൂണിയൻ യൂണിയൻ ഇസ് എഗെയിൻ സിമിലർ ടു സ്ട്രക്ചർ ദ ഓൺലി ഡിഫറൻസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ എ യൂണിയൻ ആൻഡ് സ്ട്രക്ചർ ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ മെമ്മറി അലോക്കേഷൻ വെൻ യു ഡിഫൈൻ എ യൂണിയൻ ആൻഡ് ഡിഫൈൻ എ യൂണിയൻ ടൈപ്പ് വേരിയബിൾ the memory is allocated only for one data member so that the memory requirement uh, the, that amount of memory that is being allocated will be equal to the memory required by the largest memory needed variable and you, you can define a union with any any number of members in that but only one member can hold a value at a time because only one member will be allocated with memory in the compilation or in the running process as well here i have defined a union with named my special data and it contains three data members which are of int i float of and bit of b of 20 here bit b of 20 is an array of 20 bits as you can see here out of i f and b floating point f is a variable which is requiring more the highest amount of memory so in system verilog a floating point is needed i guess 64 byte uh, bit of data uh, therefore f will be the the variable which is requiring the highest memory and when you define a union of this type and declare a variable of that this union type that particular variable will be will be allocated with memory that is equal to the memory required by a floating point variable so at a time only either i or f or b can hold any value within that particular union type variable a typical usage of union especially in case of rtl design is uh, when you have a scenario like a you have a bus which is a fixed bit wide and you have many different type of packets going into this say you have type 1 packets which again contain different different sub packets a type 2 packets which again can and another combination of sub packets and so on so if you wanted to combine all these things together the effective way of modeling this in rtl is define different structures for different data packets and finally a define a wrap around union which is containing all these uh, newly added structures or data members so you will be able to effectively handle this um, this best packets different best packets with a single uh, single variable in the rtl design if you are not clear with union at this point you can ignore it at this point you just understand that it is same as that of structure but only difference is in the memory allocation this is presented by system verilog academy and if you like the video please do subscribe our channel for more system verilog design verification and uvm videos also don't forget to take a look at the different playlist that we have created in our channel which will teach a set of selected topics in system verilog thank you for watching